This morning, we learned that Jordan, the house of over 120 disparate household name brands, from Coleman Outdoor Gear to Rollings bl Baseball Gloves to Crockpots, Mr. Coffee Machines, Oyster Blenders, Yankee Candles, is buying Jostens, a leading maker of school memorabilia. Think yearbooks, class rings, varsity jackets for $1.5 billion. I know I gave him money when I was in high school. You probably did, too. We know that Jordan is a master of making smart acquisitions that allow it to dominate various niche markets. And this Jostens deal is the latest in a long line of acquisitions that have made Jordan such a rewarding stock to own. Just three months ago, they stopped, snapped up Waddington, which makes plastic plates, cups, and cutlery $1.35 billion. These are both pretty significant, given that Jordan's only a $10.8 billion company. Now, this stock has been a terrific long-term performer, one that's given us a juicy 23% gain since we last spoke to the CEO a little less than a year ago. I think he's got more room to run. So let's take a closer look with Martin Franklin. He's the co-founder, chairman, and former CEO of Jordan. To learn more about this deal and his company's prospects, Mr. Franklin, welcome back to Man Money. Thank you, Jim. Have a seat. Yeah. All right, Mom, when I first saw it, I said, eh, a little off base. I'm used to strolling down the aisles of Target and Costco and senior stuff, and I'm not used to strolling down the halls of a, of a high school and right. buying uh, Jordan stuff. But it does make some sense versus the channel. You like new channels, don't yes. you? I mean, this is a very Jordan esque business. It's a market leader. Um, it's got a brand that you know students uh, and schools alike recognize. And the reality is, it brings us into a new distribution channel. And so, you know, our, our business is to make products that we can sell into as many channels as we can put our products in. And this is a new addition. You have some terrific sporting goods products. Can that overlap? Can you see that be sold in? Yeah, I mean, our Rawlings business, for example, yeah. does a lot of business in, in schools and deals with the same um, departments in, and uh, in schools, universities. So there's going to be an overlap uh, for sure. We it's interesting, on the conference call, uh, some of the analysts questioned, why were you able to get it so cheaply? Was it a declining brand? Uh, well, look, well, look, we always try and find value. Don't right. forget we paid eight times for Yankee Candle, and that business is growing you know, above the fleet average for Jordan. Right. Um, we, we, we think that if in this environment, if you want to create value, you've got to find businesses where you can a, a get good value and make those businesses better. Now, and, why is that you know, such an annuity stream? Why does it work so well? What I mean, because it does. In schools, it's, yes. You know, once once you're inside a school and the, and the rep organization has a relationship with that with that institution, those are very sticky relationships. A lot of them are personal relationships. Um, they're based on trust. They're based on convenience. They're based on a lot of things. And Justin's, as the market leader, provides all the tools that the schools uh, need. There's not a lot of reason to change. When I grew up, everyone, every school uh, around me, we were all Justin's schools. Are there schools that Justin's was not aggressive and no longer? And Greenfield schools for you? Yeah. Charter there's schools a, there's, for you? There's, there's a lot of uh, new space. There's also a lot of old space that can be regained. Okay. And, uh, you know, what, what we want to do is give Justin's tools that they haven't had before. Uh, this was a late, you know, long in life uh, 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 private equity right. owned company. Um, so investment wasn't, the, you know, the top priority uh, for us. Obviously, that's going to change. Right. So that's the beauty of being sort of permanent capital, long-term owner. We're going to make the investments to make that well, business stronger than it was. Back to your other channel in the stores, Martin. We had a pretty jarring day here on Wall Street because of Walmart. And Walmart, I you know, speak, speaking with Doug McMillan. I mean, obviously, he's making a big change to try to bring back the customer yeah. or to, to reinstill growth. Yeah. Um, you sell into everybody. Isn't it a fact that when the economy gets better, Walmart just kind of loses customers to some of the other stores that you do business with? Well, look, I think, look, America's doing well, and I think that's a natural challenge that, uh, that, that Walmart have. I mean, the reality is, is aspirational buyers want to go and buy in specialty, and that's what happens. When times get tough, people go shop at, at Walmart and droves even, even greater. But look, Walmart's an amazing retailer. Right. They're, they're the largest out there. They've got amazing systems. So They'll get it right. they can pull it off? I mean, yeah, I mean, they're focused on the customer. Right. At the end of the day, they give the customer what they want. Their business will thrive. But in general, business is pretty good in this country. Yes. Amer I mean, the consumer's pretty healthy. And you're in a lot of rows. You're in a lot of aisles in yeah. business. So you would have a pretty good measure of things. Yeah, I mean, we just put out, uh, you know, uh, our figures we talked this morning and when we talked about the yeah. deal, and we're up 5.9% organic. Uh, it's Which pretty is healthy. pretty darn great. Most companies are 1% to 2%. Yeah. Let me ask you back to Yankee Candle, because that was a private equity deal. Um, what was its growth rate before, and what was its growth rate two years into the jardinizing? Uh, that's a good question. When we were uh, doing our due diligence, we looked at this business, and it was presented as a sort of 6% uh, organic grower, but the reality was it wasn't growing at that rate, which was one of the reasons we were able to buy it right. at eight times. It's now back to being over a 6% grower. And part of that's been the international efforts we've made. Some of that's been the investments, been the investments we've made in the U.S. So at Jostens is, I mean, that's certainly the paradigmatic way that you want to handle We Jostens. think it'll take us 24 months to, to sort of get the business to where we think we can drive organic growth. 
and then we think we can grow it uh, at probably the low end, but, you know, maybe well, we'll do a little better than you, the fleet average You've for been us. a man of your word since we, we first had you on the show, and I Thank certainly you. believe everything that you're doing on the Jocelyn's deal is a great idea. Thanks. You're very smart guy, Martin. Thanks. That's Martin Frankly. He's the, he's the founder, executive chairman of Jordan, JAH, one of our absolute favorite stocks. And by the way, they put their money where their mouth is. They bought back a lot of stock because that's the way they care about shareholders. Man, money's back in. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.